Many of the Schulte machines are equipped with the Bondioli FT clutch. This clutch is self-adjusting and when maintained properly it will provide excellent service and protection for your driveline components. Each one of these clutches are preset, run in and tested at the Bondioli factory so the only time the clutch perimeter bolts uh, need to be adjusted is, is for servicing or replacing the linings. After an extended period of four to six months of not being used, the clutches should be taken apart to ensure all components are movable and the surfaces are free of corrosion, rust, and uh, uh, make sure that the surfaces are all uh, in operating, operating order. This video will show how to properly disassemble, service, and reassemble, and set the clutch. When servicing the clutch, always make sure that the tractor is turned off and the PTO is disengaged. We're going to start first with the disassembly of the clutch. This is very easy and all you need to do is remove these perimeter bolts. It's important that these perimeter bolts are taken, uh, are loosened evenly so that the, that, that, that the beveled spring inside does not uh, become distorted. So now that the bolts have all been loosened off evenly, we can remove the bolts. And totally disassemble the clutch. This is the spring plate. You can see clearly that it's a very, very beveled plate. The intent of this is to ensure that when the, the spring is compressed, the linings can wear down to 2.5 millimeters and the, the torque on the clutch will still remain the same uh, during that wear in period. So we'll take the components out. The indicator ring is very important to use for adjusting the clutch later. Now you can see these are new uh, new linings and you can see they've been slightly burnished. This is what happens at the Bondioli plant when they run them in just to make sure that the uh, uh, that the that the clutch is up to its intended torque rating. Whenever disassembling a clutch and reassembling it you're only going to have between 60 and 70 percent of your intended torque value until the linings become burnished again. So it's important to note that. When you have it apart, check all the components. Make sure there's no cracks in it anywhere. That there's uh, no corrosion on it. If any of these metal components have corrosion, it can be removed by using a brake cleaner and, uh, and a wire brush or a buffing wheel if necessary to get the corrosion off of it. Uh, do not use any oil-based product on it and when you're reassembling the clutch make sure that your hands are clean and there's no oil on your hands especially when touching the, uh, the discs. The other thing to be, in, to be careful of when you uh, reassemble the clutch is to make sure that this ring is in place and seated properly. Now, when reassembling the clutch, put your disc down, put your hub in place, make sure it seats properly here. Put your disc on top. Put your retaining plate down. Slip your indicator ring, this metal band is an indicator ring, put it down and put the bevel spring on top. Make sure that the inside of the bevel spring makes contact with your compression plate to make sure that it's installed right. When you're putting it back together, 
put the bolts in, the nuts to the spring side. Put them all in just uh, hand loose at first. You can only start them a little ways because the spring has quite a bevel to it, otherwise they won't all start. So once all the bolts are in place, we begin tightening them up. And we tighten them up evenly all the way around the outside to make sure that the bevel spring doesn't become distorted during this process. It takes a little bit of pressure to, to compress the spring. The one thing you want to make sure of is that you don't get it too tight that you start putting pressure on the indicator ring. The indicator ring is used as your guide to ensure that your bevel spring doesn't get too tight. As you can see, our indicator ring is still quite loose, so we continue to tighten it up a little bit along the way until the indicator ring stops moving. The indicator ring is still moving so we need to tighten a little more. I uh, felt that one bottom out so we got to back it off a little bit. We're getting real close here now. Now, I can just so move the indicator ring, just barely, I can just turn it, and this is just about exactly where you want it. You can loosen it off just a little bit, it doesn't take very much movement on the board to allow the indicator ring to move. This is just a little bit looser than it needs to be. But at this rate, the torque is going to be good on the clutch once it's run in. Now, once, the, uh, once, you've, once you've taken a clutch apart for replacing the linings, cleaning, maintenance, or whatever you've done with it, anytime you put it back together, this clutch will only have about 60 to 70 percent of its intended torque value until the linings are burnished. So you should be careful when you're when you're uh, uh, starting your machine for the first time that your, uh, your clutch slippage isn't too extensive. After the clutch slips a few times, a torque value will continue to go up until it reaches its nominal rating. As I mentioned earlier, one of the important uh, components in this clutch is the indicator ring. There are instances where the operators will have removed the indicator ring uh, for whatever reason. I'm going to illustrate now how you can adjust this clutch uh, without the use of this indicator ring. So I've loosened the bolts. I'm going to pull them out. Okay, so now we've removed the indicator ring and I'm going to demonstrate how you can adjust this clutch properly without the indicator ring. We're going to tighten up the bolts again evenly as we've done in the past. So what I've, what I've done here now is I've tightened up the bolts evenly all the way around. And if you look closely, you can see this is a 25 thou feeler gauge. You can feel that I can get that in there quite easily. If you tighten up this, this spring plate too much that it starts putting clamping pressure on uh, this plate, you will have way more torque on the clutch than you intend and that will cause uh, other driveline components to fail because the clutch is not going to be operating where it's intended. So we're going to tighten these up just a little bit. It doesn't take very much to get them close. You can get them in. It's best to check them right at the uh, at the bolt. So this is just starting to fit snug. 
should be able to butt it right up against the bolt and you're going to be good to go. If you tighten it up too much, you'll start putting clamping pressure on the clutch and your clutch will not function as it's intended. So that's just about perfect right there. Now, once you have it set here, you're going to need to run in the clutch a little bit because like I say, as soon as you've taken it apart, it's going to have about 60 to 70 percent of your torque value. So be careful when you run it in that you don't overload it too much. Uh, it won't hurt the clutch to smoke a little bit on the first couple of slips. Every time it slips a little bit, it will increase the torque until it gets to its nominal value. When you replace the clutch uh, or the drive line, always make sure that you put the retaining bolt back in and secure it properly.